semi-classical corrections, you can make predictions for observations and then compare with the data. But, uh, sorry, if I can ask something. So you also say that at some point the effect, the, in your opinion, the effective field the theory uh, description breaks down. So what do you mean by that? And the, yeah, also, I have to say- from, See, uh, uh, the way that I was ask, answering Anupam is independent of string theory. Mm -hmm. See, break down, what, what I was arguing, it, uh, in a, if you accept string theory, then I was arguing that inevitably the, any kind of local effective action will, will not be valid. Well, but uh, you, you can ask, of course, uh, a non-local effective action, and I think that this is really an important difference. And that, that was, could give you different effects. Then, then I was arguing that, that if you believe string theory, then your action will inevitably have to live in two plus nine dimensions of space, inevitably. Why? And that's simply because, because of a key duality. Mm -hmm. That's related to, your, to the paper that you posted today. Mm -hmm. But still yeah. at low energies, uh, I mean, I would say inflationary scales, and you might oh, uh, use that description. No. See, effective field theory can be self-consistent at the inflationary stage, but that doesn't mean consistent. In order to show that it's consistent, you, 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 have, to, you have to argue from top down. Now, you see, on this issue, I, I have a big debate with Cliff Burgess who has very much the opposite view to me. But, uh, so you can talk Robert, to him from the opposite point of view. Robert, unfortunately, I have to leave for a faculty meeting, but uh, let's continue this discussion. It's very interesting. If you are around in the evening, we can come back and again discuss some of these. Yeah, I'll be around until uh, 2 o'clock, your time. Okay. Oh, my time. Unfortunately, there is a five minute. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, until two o'clock um, North American time, okay. East Coast time. Good, good. Let's discuss it because unfortunately I have to go for some boring meeting, but yeah. see you all. Yeah. So uh, let's come back to the discussion session and the discussion session will be led by Joe Marto, one of the uh, as an advisory of uh, this workshop, and he has been helping me a lot. So he's from the University of Bira Interior, Covilia. Please, John, you can start the discussion session. Uh, please unmute uh, your microphone. Hi, good afternoon. Let me start with congratulating all the speakers that they've been creating a good atmosphere for good discussions and very interesting uh, talks. So from the, the, the first talk from Alexei Starobinsky, I think there were some questions that uh, wanted to be uh, posed by Philip. Philip, is there? No. Philip? Hi, you can you can un un unmute yourself. Yes, I'm here. I think you had a question for for Alexei Starobinsky in the that was postponed to this discussion. Oh well, I, um, I sort of covered it later on. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yes, um, it's it's a it's a, it's a comment, but it, what he's doing might prove very interesting in the following sense: um, there is this tension between the Hubble parameter determined from um, from Planck and the Hubble parameter determined from uh, regular astronomy like Cepheid variables, and one of the resolutions would be that the Hubble parameter at at inflation at at, at um, recombination is not the same as the Hubble parameter in the current universe. And if you keep the R squared term after inflation, which is what he was proposing, then A of T is no longer just T to the two thirds, 
And I was wondering whether in that case, with that different evolution equation, whether you could reconcile this issue of the, the Hubble tension. Well, the answer is no. Actually, I let me uh, remind very guy that this T in uh, power to third period is a rather short period, and it ends just at the moment, at the moment when um, Scargon decays. And after that, after that, uh, there is no, uh, this R squared term is of no, is of no importance. It's another thing. So any ex explanation, any um, explanation of this um, problem with the Hubble tension, if, uh, if not based, if not speaking about some uh, systematic uh, errors, it is um, uh, it is uh, it, it should use some hypothesis um, regarding the behavior of the present dark energy, and also or maybe also about the about the present dark matter. So. Um, it's possible. It's possible to use F over R in gravity to describe what happens at low curvatures. But once more, it's completely the effective effective uh, uh, the form of, of this function will, will be completely different. And as I already said, much less aesthetic. It's it's very uh, uh, phenomenological. But there were a number of papers. In particular, I participated with, in them recently last year when indeed some um, scholar, um, a little bit more general scholar tensor uh, figures of gravity from which F over I is only a special case were introduced. And uh, uh, let me only present you the result. The result is if we in, introduce such uh, uh, figures, once more, the modification of uh, general relativity at low curvatures, mm, then, uh, and if uh, such figures we uh, re require, of course, that they should uh, satisfy all known tests, then um, final, I would say, uh, final uh, the result is is the following. It's possible and uh, uh, not so difficult to rise um, uh, the Hubble, Hubble parameter from uh, 67 that follows from the Planck data to about 70, but it's very difficult to go beyond. <laughs> so uh, it's very difficult to obtain the 74. So it's it's a question of numbers. If you t t take all, all existing, all, all existing. And in this respect, this is also a question to astronomers, because astronomers, not all astronomers, think that H0 should be 74, in particular um, using um, red, red E giants, red E giants, where the conclusion was it should be, it should be 70. Um, so, 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 so I would uh, I would say that um, let us wait until astronomers who investigate local value of H naught let us wait until they uh, come to the unique uh, answer and then, as I said, from uh, from the point of view of my identification of yeah, gravity once more, I can repeat it's possible by going to some variant of a scalar tensor gravity, it's possible to rise from 67 to 70, but not, but not beyond. Well, well, first of all, thank you. Thank you for that very detailed reply. I would say getting to 70, even if Hubble is at 72, 73, I, is no longer a, a major tension. I mean, it, it's a tension, but it's not, it, it's nothing like it would have, it, it would, it would have been before. So that, that's still quite, uh, that's still quite an accomplishment. Okay, but, but once more, I can revert, just revert your argument, that this is just 
illustration that if this small difference is really confirmed, then indeed we can uh, extract uh, uh, new physics and much more. Not, not, not new physics at inflationary scales, but new physics at the present. Uh, actually, we have a related question by uh, So in Park. Uh, so in Park, are, are you there? Yeah. Can you unmute yourself and ask? Because you're writing in the chat. Actually, uh, may I? Once, once he is preparing, may I make only, uh, I uh, would not like to discuss with Robert about um, the, whole, the whole problem. I want only to emphasize that, and I want actually I'm emphasize it, that we are, we are now at the stage in, in which we are, at which we are interested not in the form of new theories, we are also interested in numbers. And, in particular, what I, from my side, greatly expect from all the string theory is the definite is, is the definite prediction of the decay time of, of the present energy. Uh, but when people tell me uh, the coefficient is all, all over, over one, I would say I'm not satisfied with this level. Give some because actually from astronomical uh, side, actually many astronomers are frantically trying to find any deviation of a of a present back energy from the exact cosmological constant. And let me say, well, first there is no statistically significant deviation. But if you still be a little bit less strict and try to see some tendency, the tendency, of course, once more, it is inside, inside the residual area. The tendency is just the opposite, slightly opposite. Uh, and this is, uh, this is called the effective equation of state is, is, is slightly phantom. So dark, present dark energy, maybe have some tendency not to decay but to but to grow and it would be very interesting if string theorist indeed presents us some model in which the present dark energy is not decaying but just the opposing growing Okay, so I think that we can give words to Soyun Park and after to to Gia. Uh, Soyun. I, I, okay. Yeah, I don't really have much to much more to say about this. I actually wrote in the chat, so I just wanted to ask about the summation of infrared low regions in perturbative quantum quantum gravity calculations. So how what is the status? Uh, that's my question, actually. Yeah. The uh, states of uh, states of what I missed. Uh, the the, the resummation of IR logs in like uh, some perturbative calculations, so in perturbative loop calculations. In. Are you speaking in, about? Infrared effects or yes, ultra infrared effect, yes. Uh, okay, uh, so, so okay, uh, so uh, I would say that we have some restricted uh, restricted achievement that in case of in, in particular um, in the case of scalar perturbations uh, yes. generated during. Inflation, it's possible to uh, 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 to sum or uh, to go into the into the into the regime where these perturbations are not small, and this indeed require uh, require the summing of the of infrared 
if we had cut elections. O okay, so it's possible, and actually, uh, this is what is called a st stochastic ap approach mm -hmm. to inflation. Uh, we don't, uh, this figure is not a generalized to the case of tensor perturbations, partly mm -hmm. because it's more complicated, and partly because, as I said, this perturbations are um, during inflation are much smaller than scalar perturbations. So in the in the regime when scalar perturbations are uh, are, are large, uh, tensor perturbations are still small. Uh, so I would like uh, so once more my uh, uh, short answer that it's possible in case of in, in case of scalar perturbations, but I should add uh, mm, uh, uh, in the standard scenarios, in particular, in the minimal scenarios about which I spoke, this unfortunately occurs at scales much, much, much larger than the when the present when the present when the present had risen. But and this is another topic. I uh, it was pointed. In, in one um, uh, in one uh, line in my talk, but I did not have. We are now um, very uh, actively discussing if some of the world's black holes, which merges, we see for gravitational wave antennas, if some of them are not uh, from uh, from cold soft stars, but but pri pri Model. The scenario, the, the minimal scenario which I presented to you, which is only one constant, does not predict any significant amount of, of primordial black holes. So to have them, if we, if we really have them, we shall have to add some, some, I would say, new physics, speaking in terms of the effective potential we should um, have some feature in the effective potential. Uh, we should have some temporal growth of the slow, slow roll approximation on, on which all existing viable models of inflation are, are, um, are based. And then it appears that in this case, indeed, this uh, um, one has to think about all of this infra, infra the uh, and so, indeed, uh, in some papers, um, it was shown that if um, if if we have a breaking of a slow a slow a slow temporal a temporal breaking of a slow roll competition, then indeed one has to take into account this um, uh, this stochastic effects. And actually, uh, it can be summarized. Okay, let me summarize. But in this case, uh, we have to use uh, the, uh, we have to consider the thing which is well known and widely considered in condensed matter. Uh, uh, and this is so instead of uh, consideration of uh, creation of particles in the external, in the deterministic external field. We have to consider um, creation of particles in the in the stochastic external field, and this is, as I said, uh, uh, creations in the stochastic potentials is a very uh, uh, very well known area of research in condensed matter. Uh, if I understood you correctly, so your stochastic technique doesn't apply to tensor perturbations. Is that correct? No, well, no, no. It's uh, it uh, it uh, it applies, but first it is not developed, so it's only hope. And second, uh, second, uh, it is uh, it should work just in that a little bit academic case, which I discussed in the first day. But when we have uh, exact, when we have Einstein Einstein gravity with exact cosmological constant. In all cases, in all inflationary models, you know, in which our decitor state is unstable, not because of a quantum effects, but uh, simply because due to its, because the properties of this effective potential, uh, it uh, is the case uh, uh, long before um, uh, tensor 
tensor perturbations squared uh, becomes over order of unity. Actually, actually, it's even. Uh, uh, let, let me remind you that the total um, um, tensor perturbations square are over order of uh, Hubble square divided by M Planck square умноженное умноженное over number of efforts. Okay, and so once more for any um, for any realistic inflationary model, the risk quantity is much less than unity. But in the uh, once more in the uh, academic or st but still interesting case of um, Einstein gravity equantization of Einstein gravity plus plus the cosmological constant, then indeed it should work. But once, as I said, it is it is not yet concerted. Thank you okay, very much. thank you. I think there is also some question from Gia. Okay, okay. Yes, Alexei, I just wanted to uh, answer what you you asked for a criteria of the um, of the quintessence that it is imposed. And in in our paper with Cesar in 2013, I think or 12, uh, I don't remember. The, in the first paper, where we we pointed out this thing, the, the fact that. There is a quantum breaking, and therefore this excludes the sitter. And there is a you know, there is a very clear criteria, and this this criteria didn't change. That the quantum break time of your system has to be uh, longer than the classical evolution time. And uh, so there are two cases. If you have a system which has no Lyapunov exponent. Uh, such as, for example, dead cosmological constant, if you have simply cosmological constant, the quantum break time scales as inverse of the coupling of the quantum coupling of your system. And if uh, your system has Lyapunov exponent, then the quantum break time scales logarithmically with one over the coupling. So these are the two cases. And this, uh, for example, if you have a quintessence model, right? Of course, as you know very well, it's very hard to come up with a consistent quintessence model given other criteria from particle physics. It's extremely hard to come up with, a, with, with, with it. But once you come up with a model which passes other criteria, if you give me that model, I can tell you whether it passes this quantum breaking criteria or not. And how fast, and this quantum breaking criteria tells you how fast your dark energy has to evolve, if it is there. So if it is there, it, it, it limits from, from the, the evolution time because it, it needs, you need a graceful exit before your system quantum breaks. So it's, a, it's a straightforward criterion. So for example, if you, if, you, if, you, if you want to, if you have a model, your favorite quintessence model or dark energy model, uh, we can answer right away whether, how, how long it has before it quantum breaks and therefore how fast it has to evolve. So there is no ambiguity here. It's a well-defined criterion, which gives a well-defined answer. Of course, I cannot exclude that there may be other criteria. And it's not that this is the this is the final criterion, of, obviously, but this is what we see within S metrics theory of gravity. Uh, so if you if you don't want to, talk, to, to think in terms of string theory, that's fine. As long as you stay within S matrix formulation of quantum gravity, this criterion is there. So that, would, that so that, that that's that, that's the story. Um, yeah, yeah, but. Uh, uh, Okay, I um, remember your quantum, your quantum criterion, and actually I uh, we disagree with uh, with, uh, with what's happened, what's happened uh, uh, after, but we agree uh, at least in the simplest case, in the case of one one in graviton, not speaking about this, your, your model with the large number of, of in, in gravitons. And this criterion is, is just of what I said in the answer on the previous question. So the number of efforts multiplied h squared divided by implant squared of the order of unity. But I should say that from observation point of view speaking about the present dark energy it's very it's very i would say <laughs> not much interesting uh, uh, criteria so it it says practically that the 
e pesa back energy is equal to the is equal to the to the cosmological constant with the a fantastic accuracy. So so from, from observation point point yeah. of view, no, no, I, I understand. So much interesting. No, I understand, Alexei. This is what, what I precisely try to answer. That that's not the case because so that case, if you have only constant lambda, that is killed by that precisely that number of holdings because constant lambda cannot evolve on any number of holdings, so it's killed. Now, once you introduce quintessence, quintessence comes as a degree of freedom, and this degree of freedom has its own coupling, and it, it, usually it has its own Laplace of exponent. And now you should forget about that criterion, and now you have to apply criterion that comes from the lacuna of exponents to that quintessence field. And then you will then you will discover that it's pretty stringent. In, in many cases, of course, as I said, I don't I don't have my favorite model of dark energy, therefore I cannot single out anything. But typically, uh, this criterion is extremely stringent. It's not one over alpha; it's log out of that. So the number usually con gets converted into a log. And that gives you a very stringent criteria usually. So you see, you see there is a discontinuity dis dis between pure lambda and once you introduce a scalar degree of freedom. Once you introduce a scalar degree of freedom, the quantum break time may shorten dramatically. Usually it shortens, usually. Of course, maybe there are exceptions, I don't know. So that, that's precisely what's my point, that you, you immediately jump to logarithmic time and then it's very short. So, yeah. I cannot hear you. Okay, yes. I like okay. Once more, uh, uh, I would say that it would be it would be uh, useful to take some concrete model and make a definite prediction because once more, uh, sure. you know much from from observations. I'm also working uh, on this question, but what follows from observations? Yes. I agree. I agree. Okay, Th thank you. Let us turn also our attention to Matt Saidi uh, talk. I think there was a question from Zakaria. Zakaria, are you online? Can you uh, unmute yourself? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you can uh, ask so your question my, to... Yeah, so my question is for Professor Yamagoshi. Yes. Uh, I just, uh, yeah, two simple questions. So the first one, when you consider your Hodonsky uh, action, uh, you eliminate, eliminate many terms. So after that, did you use the constrained uh, action uh, obtained after the GW 170817? <laughs> yeah, so so if you consider it, it's natural to obtain the speed of gravitational waves as the unity. Uh, so I don't know what's the new thing uh, by seeing in Platini or in other frame that you obtain it also as unity, because you consider already in the beginning the restricting Lagrangian that predicts uh, the velocity as unity. The second mm -hmm. one, um, when you said that this action will be equivalent in Platini to dosed, we know that to obtain dosed, we do uh, this formal transformation from Hardinsky to to go to those theories. So is it equivalent to have uh, this normal transformation for what you did uh, with your action in Platini formalism. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, that, that's all. That, and okay. the third, yeah, the third is more provocative. So, do you consider uh, GW17, so the restrictions constraint coming from GW17 or it's 17 valid con if we take uh, into account the cutoff of validity of the EFT? Which is in the range of validity, uh, the range of LIGO. So, to question if the the theory is still valid at this range or not, to to consider these constraints. You mean the you consider the Hornetsky yeah. metric? Yeah, the paper. Yeah, I'm just pointing out the paper of Claudia Duran about the rainbow, uh, just to take into account that the EFT. Uh, at these synergies maybe uh, it's not any more valid. So, and maybe you cannot take uh, these restrictions very seriously. So, so yeah, as I told you before, in my opinion, uh, Hornetsky theory shouldn't be understood as the EFT. Of course, some region applied to the EFT view, but uh, not all. 
as I told you before, you see, if the higher derivative terms uh, dominate the energy density of the, I mean, the, dominate the dynamics, it cannot be understood as EFT. So I, I'm not, I didn't understand what your claim was question truly, but uh, as far as I understand, you see, if the, this field this is responsible for the dark energy, and uh, if we seriously think we take out a constraint of the uh, uh, speed of the gravitation wave, uh, unless we make a fine tuning, you see, for G4 or combination of G4X or G5 or G5X, uh, in general, uh, such terms are ruled out. That's conclusion. And uh, so, what, yeah. What's your point in the okay. EFT? Ah, okay, okay. I understand. But for the first part, I said if you consider already the restricted Lagrangian after the constraints coming from GW17 or 17, is it not natural to obtain CT equal to one in Platini frame? Ah, it's so completely in the, independent yeah. from the restricted Lagrangian. So, so in, in this sense, yeah, related to the uh, comment on the uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, in the uh, my talk, and the, in Palatini formalism, we have not yet obtained the uh, most generic one at all. Just a very starting point, you see. And uh, as far as okay. we, I mean, the, in our, as far as we investigate, very fortunately, sound speed of the tensor perturbation is uh, shown to be unities, but. Uh, for example, we have not, I have not yet discussed L5 class at all. And even for G4 or L4, you see, we have a degree of freedom of the include the uh, counter term. Can I share the my slide? Maybe it's easier to explain. You see, so, so for, for example, we completely omit uh, this counter term because uh, uh, counter mm -hmm. terms are ne unnecessary to keep the second order equation mode. But if you wish, you can include uh, this term. But different from the metric form, as I told you before, you see, even in, in case of the palatine form, even this simple box phi is not uniquely determined. We have uh, 10 different combinations. So once we consider uh, this term, you see, we have a more and more possibility. And we have not yet uh, investigated this kind of term. And uh, now, yeah, try to find it. And uh, even we might have, a, you see, we have, we didn't uh, investigate uh, this kind of class. And in case of the Palatini formalism, we might have more terms. You see, nobody knows. So, okay. so in this sense, this is quite interesting question, you see. What is a really most general single scalar tensor theory whose equation motion is uh, up to second order in Palatini formalism? This is completely open question. You see, so our approach is just a very beginning of the first step, you see. But uh, okay. even in the G3 terms, you see, we, investigate uh, this simple class. And uh, yeah, someone told me that uh, this is uh, too simple. But you see, mm -hmm. I didn't show the calculations, but uh, even this simple case, if we try to find a, a connection, this is quite messy. And uh, mm -hmm. you see, perturbation is, all, mm -hmm. I mean, the co correspondent dose is too messy. Mm -hmm. So if, if we mm -hmm. include uh, these terms, I'm not sure how many terms appears and uh, how messy is the calculation. But, uh, but should how, we try? How, how you do the correspondence with DOST? Because normally to pass from Hordansky to DOST, we do uh, this formal transformation. So how ah, do you, yeah. And uh, yeah, this is also open question in Palatini format. How these terms are oh, related okay. by this format or something. Yeah, this is open question. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, please try. Okay. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you both. Uh, Sravan, you can pick the... Uh, 
have provocative questions which are kind of i i want to understand this really so i it's uh, the question is for robert and also for gia actually so i am bit confused uh, with uh, uh, i mean um, listening about uh, string theory so there are like there are uh, it is divided so there are some group of people say okay well string theory inflation can be perfectly embedded in string theory there is no problem and there are again swamp line criteria which is uh, uh, you know uh, it is a different uh, uh, swamp line conjectures uh, which says okay well the standard floral inflation cannot be fit this is one confusion and another thing uh, as gia mentioned yesterday about uh, uh, s matrix so, so that the uh, s matrix cannot be defined for d sitter so well inflation uh, at least the slow roll the standard uh, r square like inflationary picture is that okay well it's like a slowly decaying cosmological constant so uh, so it is unstable anyway so that means uh, string, uh, string theory is compatible with the uh, inflationary picture right so the, so the, and so in this sense i'm confused and there is another point as robert mentioned uh, if uh, the locality breaks down um, in the string theories then if if, it, if locality breaks down where is non locality in the conjectures and the last point i want to mention are the conjectures are uh, challenge to string theory people or for people who are doing phenomenology so what mm -hmm. is important to be okay so sure? let me let me address some of the questions so as you say there are a lot of uh, constructions in quotation marks of uh, of the sitter within string theory and one good reference of that is the textbook by Liam McAllister and Daniel Baumann. There you see a very, very good compilation of different approaches, but in each approach, you will actually see that the concluding comment is that they're open questions. Now, there are actually no go theorems within effective field theory. So if you, if you have a four dimensional effective field theory coming from higher dimensions, so effective field theory, then you can show that it is impossible to get the sitter if you work within the context of the perturbative approach, and if you assume that the uh, extra dimensions are time independent. So that's a theorem. And a reference of that is a, is a, a paper by uh, Keshav Dasgupta, Radu Tata, and collaborators. Now you, have to, you actually have to dig into uh, this paper in order to see that this is really the upshot, that it's a no-go theorem. Uh, so, just say, uh, depending on what you said, you said the extra dimensions, uh, the, the loophole. Uh, uh, so if, yeah. if you if you allow the extra dimensions to have lots of time dependence, yeah, then the no go theorem doesn't apply. But but I would say from the point of view of of the of the low energy theory, we would like the extra dimensional physics to be time independent. So this is what- yeah, Low energy theory, yes, but at a high energy, like, okay, at very, very tall, short time scales, uh, we expect extra dimensions, right? So, so they should somehow disappear uh, uh, through evolution, right? In the- uh, No, but the, what I'm saying, this is, so. this is, it's in this context. So it, it just means that you cannot, you cannot get this data, which means that a lot of the constructions- Can I also insert a comment on that? Is it okay if I insert? Go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Uh, so, so uh, no, these are absolutely correct questions. And uh, so uh, to answer this, of course, it requires a little bit longer discussion, but but let's somehow try to, uh, let me try to address very briefly also what Robert was, was saying. So, uh, the, the, so the question is, what is the starting point and, and how we get to these conclusions, right? So the, 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 the starting, but I mean, originally this, this, this statement that you cannot have uh, uh, slow, uh, you cannot have metastable or uh, eternal inflation in the sitter. As I said, this, this was made in, in our paper, Cesar Gomez and mine in 2013. And our starting point was that we, the, we took from string theory only very general ingredients uh, which is a formulation of the S-metric based on S-metrics, okay? 
Uh, nothing, nothing else depended on, on, on particular constructions in string theory, okay? So therefore, if we take as a starting point as S matrix as a formulation of your favorite theory of quantum gravity. It, it, if you don't like it, it doesn't have to be string theory, it, it doesn't matter. Then these conclusions follow, okay? It follows that you cannot have any uh, inflationary Hubble patch that lasts longer than certain number of foldings that is given by the quantum rate time, okay? Now, um, now on top of that, now this is, this, is, this is generic and based on S matrix. Now, then what we are observing is that if you now go to specific string theory constructions and, in, and try to get stable the sitter in string theory constructions, uh, now the, 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 the only, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know, currently the only machinery for, 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 for getting the sitter in string theory, because in string theory, you need positive uh, contribution to the energy density because you need the sitter. And the only tool for getting positive contribution of energy density in string theory currently considered are D-brains, okay? And this idea also was introduced in, in paper with, uh, with Henry Tai and myself in, 90, in, in 98. So we, we started this, this idea that we wanted to construct the sitter in string theory. We were motivated by inflation. We wanted to have inflation. And so now what we're, what we're learning by doing explicit string theory constructions is that it's extremely hard to really get and stabilize the brains without making extra assumptions. So in this sense, uh, I fully agree what, what, what Robert says, that all these constructions that explicitly deal with string theory, with, from, from my personal experience, I tried a lot. I mean, I, mean, I, I was working on this for se several years, uh, trying to, and it never worked. Always, I had to make some assumption about Keller, some strong coupling somewhere, or uh, things like this. So th this is the state of art. So the state of art is that very general criteria based on S metrics tells us that this is impossible, okay? And we see every time we check precisely uh, string theory deconstruction, we see why it is not possible. That indeed string theory is telling us that this is not possible. It's, it's not possible to have eternal inflation. It's not possible to have... Uh, so so, th so that's, that, that's, the, that's, the st that's the state of art. Now, of course then, we can go beyond this knowledge by conjecturing things that are not so easy to prove, but, but are even more stringent, okay? So that's another layer of uh, steps. But I'm talking about things that can be understood from the point of view microscopic theory. And one thing that this is, if we start from the S matrix, one thing that I don't see how this can be changed. I mean, I simply don't see a way out is to have uh, eternal desitter in an S matrix theory, either in form of eternal inflation or metastability or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, that's, that would be my very, very brief answer on, 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 your, on your question. I, I don't so know if you, it, it, it. In your In your S matrix theory, inflation fits, right? I just want to be sure. Your yeah, in, in, so in S matrix theory, right, exactly. So in an S, in S matrix formulation, I don't see evidence that would tell me that inflation cannot take place. Okay, so I simply don't see that evidence. So that's why I said that there is one point in which I disagree with, with, with Robert. Uh, it's not a disagreement, it's just I'm saying, I don't see, I cannot, I don't see a proof of that. I don't see evidence that inflation is incompatible, okay, with the S matrix formulation. Uh, so therefore, I mean, since I don't see evidence, I, I, I just simply stick with, with, with what I see. Uh, because if the number of holdings is short, is, is, is finite and small enough, there is no contradiction with S matrix. Okay, you, then we but can. You, again. you said you said S matrix is heart of string theory yesterday. Uh, uh, today. Yes, yeah, formulate so string theory is based on S matrix. And by the way, one important thing is that very often we, we sometimes we use term perturbation theory. S matrix has nothing to do with perturbation theory. Perturbation theory is a method how to compute it. But S matrix is S matrix. You have in states, out states, and there is a matrix that connects them. Okay. So it, this is a fully no perturbative statement. The fact that we, we need S matrix to formulate the theory and what are the consequences that it gives us, that's a, that's a non perturbative statement, okay? Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is a question from Alexander Wickman. Uh, it, it's actually not that much equation, it's more like a, a comment uh, because uh, Zuka, uh, or Zaharia, sorry, Zaharia was uh, asking Masahide regarding uh, effective field theory and so on. And I just wanted to make a comment that standard effective field theory is just uh, 
and if you want analytic expansion and inverse cutoff power, uh, and then the important ingredients of our counting and things like that. Whereas uh, the, at least the simplest understanding of, let's say, this Hardensky term, which survives uh, gravitational wave observations, is that it's actually kind of hydrodynamics. And the, the truth is, if you take a shift symmetric serial like that, this is G box, G of X uh, box phi, then uh, you will see that general covariant equations of motion written in the, in the frame moving, if you want, with a scalar, if you kill expansion of this, of this frame, uh, you exactly derive diffusion equation. And now you see the point is why, why I'm pointing this out is exactly what Masahide said, that uh, it's not really just simple effective field theory because uh, the way how the function k of x or g of x should look like has nothing to do with the simple analytic expansion is around some inverse scale. It actually can be really a mess because if you check normal examples of normal hydrodynamics, that can look really, really messy. Generically, it assumes non-analyticity actually in this kinetic term and moreover absence of normal Lorentz invariant vacuum because you know it's hydrodynamics and hydrodynamics, if you take a limit that the number density is vanishing, doesn't make any sense. And this theory just breaks down around normal, uh, if you want vacuum where X is zero. So that's why there is a good, uh, you know, kind of intuition to say that, okay, this series are not just normal EFTs in the normal sense that you integrated out some degree of freedom coupled to this phi and then you generate uh, this uh, horrible structure. So most probably just some very, very effective description and to derive it, I am not aware how to derive such things even in, in uh, you know, well, in hydrodynamics, we kind of know how to do it, but uh, generically it's much harder than the usual procedure. And even what are the collective degrees of freedom is not straightforwardly related to the UV structure of these guys. So that's just, just, just a comment and maybe Zahari, that's, that's a kind of addition to what Masahide said to Zahari. Of course, the very kind of speculative question would be, if you start treating such uh, complicated non-linear series in Palatini approach, do they also represent some hydrodynamics or not? Because formally going from Palatini to a uh, metric, it's kind of just modifying meta, uh, sorry, gra gravitational sector. But nevertheless, maybe there is also some meaning in effective hydrodynamics, which one could get there. But that's, I don't know. That's just- Alex, further. thank you. I totally agree with you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you for thank your you. clarification. But actually, there was a paper by Vernizzi and so on about effective field theory of dark energy and so on, and they construct the Lagrangian and they have correspondence between the coefficient of this Lagrangian and all the, the known coefficients of Hordonsky. And even we use it now, there will be mission of uh, the Euclid mission, there will be some parameters that will be constrained uh, using uh, EFT approach. So yeah. I'm talking about... Don't don't forget, this EFT approach is not really an expansion in inverse, inverse cutoff. Ah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not, not yeah, it's, expansion, right? <laughs> yeah. Not at all. <laughs> it's only yeah. on the classical level, yeah. Yeah, it's so-called EFT. It has nothing to do with proper counting power or yeah. anything. It's just expansion and perturbation written in a clever way. It's a different story. So it means even the, the argument uh, from uh, Claude de Ram and all about uh, if this condition of restriction by GW 17 or 17, we cannot take it like really seriously uh, because of this cutoff. So uh, what do you think about that? Well, you see, on one hand, it's, it's true that it's very close to the, to the bound. On the other hand, uh, we don't have any examples of any UV completion. And moreover, as these uh, actions have, uh, uh, you know, superluminal propagation around some background, uh, it's not uh, really clear how to UV complete it. Actually, there is no single proper example of how to derive some UV complete, complete theory for that, you know? So that's a problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Philip? Philip? Yeah, I, Philip? Oh, okay. 
So, yes, I just had a, a somewhat general thought about the Palatini formalism. Um, I think it has to be modified slightly, but I don't think that Mashida's results change. And the issue is this, the levi civita connection, the one that's just the derivative of the metric, is not a rank three tensor. Now, if you start out with a general uh, connection that is a rank three tensor, you can never do a variation and ever get something that isn't. On the other hand, if you start out with a connection that's not a rank three tensor, it is not meaningful from a geometric point to vary an action with something that doesn't transform as a true tensor under a general coordinate transformation. So what can you do? What you have to do is take the general connection and write it as the levi civita plus something else, which is a general, a general rank three tensor. In other words, I think you, the only way that coordinate invariance will make sense is if you put the levi civita into the fundamental connection right at the beginning and just do the variation with respect to the rest, because whatever else we've done, like the, the, the vial modification with the electromagnetic field, um, putting in torsion, it doesn't matter. That extra piece has to be a general coordinate rank three tensor. And I think that what uh, Mashida does is in the end, he finishes up with the, the Levi Civita plus another piece, which is a rank three tensor, which is fine. And I think he would have got there, in my viewpoint, he would have got there better if he'd have put in the Levi Civita from the beginning and just varied with respect to the other piece. But th that's my comment. Babe, thank you very much for your comment. Let, let me try. Okay. Yeah, I see. Uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not yet convinced which is better because in the standard gauge theory, you see, for U1 electromagnetism, just we take a variation with respect to gauge field A view, even though this is not gauge invariant. So I'm not sure it's better to confine ourselves to the variation of the action with respect to only tensor or not. Hmm. But let, let me consider, I see. Thank you for your, your comment, I see. I think uh, just to go back with, with electromagnetism, because you have F mu nu, F mu nu, the non-gauge piece of the, uh, of the vector potential doesn't appear in the derivative d mu a nu minus d mu a nu. But if you put the Levi Civita, if you put a general connection, which is not a general rank three tensor into the action, the action will not be a general coordinate scalar. Whereas the electromagnetic action is gauge invariant. And I think but but uh, we don't take uh, action with, we don't take action with respect to f mu nu. Rather we take a variation with respect to a mu itself. Yes, but I'm saying is you've written down an action which is gauge invariant. Whereas if you haven't specified how the connection transforms, then you've written down an action which isn't a general coordinate scalar. And that was John's question from before. Why can't you just write the coupling of the connection to any other set of fields, like, uh, like say d mu phi, d mu phi, and so on. Uh, and the point is, even if the connection you, you have to have an action which is a general coordinate scalar before, before mm -hmm. you start. And, and that, that constrains how the connection can transform. And that, that, was, the, that was the only point I had. Of, of course the action is uh, invariant under gauge transformations. I mean, that's why you use the curvature tensors, right? So you just have to say, what is your gauge transformation? So if you <laughs> use a torsion field or non-metricity field or um, a spin connection, then your, your symmetry uh, transformations are translations for the torsion, local Lorentz transformations for the curvature, and conformal transformations for the non-metricity. And under any of those transformations, the action is manifestly invariant precisely because it contains only f minus square terms, right? So I don't see any problem with that approach. No, let, let me go back to gravity. If the connection is not a tensor, you-, you Well, I was talking about gravity, just saying, you know. If you write down gamma lambda mu nu, you can couple it to another gamma. And you have, you, you balanced all the indices. And if the gamma is a true rank three tensor, then that's a general coordinate scalar. 
And this is not a curvature term. No, but it, under the Palatini proposal, you treat the, you, you ask the same question, you treat the connection as a dynamical degree of freedom. Now, if the dynamical degree of freedom is a general coordinate tensor, you can, con you can couple it back to itself. And you no, no, you can't, because that, that's the same what Masahide was saying. If you calculate, for example, a mu squared, then the, you know, the, the gauge boson picks up a mass, which violates U1 symmetry. So in the same sense, you can't write down gamma, uh, gamma mu squared because it violates gauge symmetry. So I don't, I mean, I think this is consistent with the picture that, that Masahide was mentioning as well. Not violate gauge symmetry if the gamma is a rank three tensor. It only is a problem if the gamma is not a rank three tensor because it contains the levi civita piece, which is not a rank three tensor. But if you yeah, but as soon as you do geometry, then gamma is a connection and it always is a non-tensor because a connection is never a tensor. It doesn't matter if you have nonmetricity or torsion, uh, it always has a connection piece, right? You're right, but these uh, the, pieces are tensorial, but the piece itself- Thank you for the discussion. There is a question by Ro Robert, uh, so there is some confusion. If you clarify the confusion, I think it will be, discussion will be engaging. Yeah, this was exactly what I was saying, right? I was saying the Christoffel connection is not a tensorial object, but these things that you add on top, which Philip was mentioning, like the torsion piece or a possible non-metricity piece, these things are tensorial quantities, but the connection piece itself, uh, the underlying connection piece, the levi civita piece that, that uh, Robert is mentioning, this will always transform inhomogeneously. There's no way around it as long as you do uh, gravity. That's the no, statement. I have no dispute with that statement. But what I'm asking is, when you just write down the connection, you don't know how it transforms under a general coordinate transformation because you haven't yet constructed it. That's the, that's the issue for Palatini. So what you want to have, of course, is that its only non-tensor piece will be Levi Civita. But the question is, is that the only thing that Palatini allows? And the answer is no unless you know ahead of time how the, 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 the connection is not a rank three tensor. You have to know that. It cannot be a rank three tensor because you have to, you use it to define a covariant derivative, right? So it's partial plus partial derivative plus the connection piece. So this thing has to transform inhomogeneously. You can always add something that's not, that's tensorial, sure. And that's the thing that's the ambiguity in Palatini but it has to have a non-homogeneous piece just by definition, just because it's a covariant derivative. I so think it has to have a unique non-covariant piece. That's what I'm I, saying. I, sorry, I, I disagree with you, Philip. I disagree with you, Philip, in the sense that uh, if you say that uh, gamma is a connection, it has a unique uh, transformation property just uh, from uh, geometry even yes. before you write any action. It's, uh, it's uniquely defined and it's the same transformation property as the Christoffel symbols. Exactly, e e exactly. Therefore, what I'm saying is, if you want to say that the connection is not a rank three tensor, it's not necessarily meaningful to do a, a, to do a stationary variation of an action with respect to it. However, if you, so what all I'm saying is if you subtract off. Why, sorry, why do you say that? It is perfectly meaningful to vary with respect to a connection, even if it is not a, a tensor. Well, you don't have reliable equation. You don't get, uh, you don't get covariant equations. You don't, you don't get rank three tensor equations. That, that's all I'm saying. I, I, and I don't think- They are what they are. Then you solve them and you get, uh, <laughs> the equations, which are the usual ones, Einstein's equations. Yeah, it's just U1. It's just what Masahide was saying, right? Just in U1, you do the same thing. You vary with respect to A mu, which is certainly not a U1 tensor, but it's uh, you get the uh, covariant field equations, right? So even in the non-abelian case, so. So yeah, anyway, uh, we are uh, approaching for the se second session. Uh, one last, if it is a very quick question, Ivano. Hi, yeah, actually it's just a very, little comment. Uh, I didn't think you, the discussion would have gone this far out of the topic I originally meant the question for, but the comment for, but it's about the, the Sitter constructions in, in string theory. And um, so yeah, first of all, I, yeah, I completely agree with uh, 
with all that's been said about bulk constructions, what I just wanted to mention is that um, there are some very recent proposals about um, the Sitter uh, brain world constructions. And uh, for, for this, you can check out the new paper, the recent papers by the group in Uppsala. Um, and also I, I have a paper about this, but the, the idea is that if you have an anti desitter space, so the bulk is ADS and not DS, um, if that ADS is um, metastable, it can nucleate bubbles, right? That expand. And it turns out that you can describe an effective desitter gravity on uh, on the brain. That, that's just what I wanted to say. I think it's you know it, it's a very recent proposal, so it makes sense that it's not uh, fully you know, drawn ah. into the collective uh, consciousness. But yeah, uh, please, that, that's please share the reference in the chat. Uh, we are yeah. collecting uh, all the references in the chat, and we will uh, send uh, at the end uh, all the references. Maybe it's useful for all of us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll just share them in the chat right now. Okay, thank you. So we are approaching the, the end of this uh, discussion. We should take uh, a break. There is a second session that will start at uh, four uh, and a half in Central Europe time. So let me thank again all the, the speakers of this session. And also all the, the, the participants who made excellent questions and contributed to the discussion. And so let us take a good break and come, come back in 15 minutes or so.